Hello everybody. Today we are going to learn about building a scatter plot for our inertial balances lab. So each of you should have a piece of graph paper. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to use a straight edge and we are going to draw our axes. So we want to make sure that we've left enough space to clearly label them and just draw a nice straight line for our horizontal and our vertical axes. So that's gonna be my x-axis. You'll see I've left enough space to clearly label that. Um, and I'm going to draw one for my vertical axis as well. So again, I'll leave myself a couple of blocks worth of space, just enough to clearly label it. All right, so I have my axes. This point here, the origin, is going to be 0, 0. And we're going to label our x-axis, which is always on the x-axis, you put the independent variable. So in this case, that is going to be the mass in grams. So we include both what is being measured and what we're measuring it in. And on the vertical axis, we have the time which is measured in seconds. We've got time in seconds, and we've got mass in grams. Now the next step is going to be determining our scale. So you wanna think about how many blocks you have and how much you have to cover. So for most people, you should have around 50 blocks, and you should have a little less because we cut off some to make space for our axes. Um, and you probably don't have any masses bigger than a kilogram. So my recommendation for mass would be to make each block be 25 grams. So that means that this first block would be 25 grams, 50 grams would be here, 75 grams there, which means that this spot right here would be 100 grams. So let me just label that 100. Uh, and to be clear, the 100 is at this line. So right there is where 100 is. It's not here in the middle, it's at this line. And I made that very clear by making an extra big tick mark. And then we've got 125, 150, 175, and then right here, that spot is going to be 200. And I'm gonna keep going across my horizontal axis. You'll notice, by the way, that my paper is long-wise because I've got many more masses to do than times. The masses go a lot bigger. So 225, 50, 75, 300 will be here. 25, 50, 75, 400, 25, 50, 75, 500, and you're just going to go ahead and do this all the way across. So go ahead, take a moment, and fill this out for yours as well. If your data doesn't come anywhere close to a thousand, you might choose to make these blocks bigger. So if everything was under 500, you might be like, hmm, well, I could make these individual blocks be 10 grams instead of 25, and that would make it a little bit easier to be precise. But in general, go ahead and label your axis all the way across. Um, for your time, you should have somewhere in the realm of 30 to 40 blocks available to you. So you could do uh, three blocks equals one second, where each block is a third of a second. Um, or you could do uh, where each block is half of a second, depending on how much time you've got. Um, I'm thinking about my data. The data I've got goes pretty high, so I think I'm gonna make each block be half a second. So that would be one half second, and then here would be one. One and a half, two would be here three would be here, and so on, going on up. So go ahead and label both of your axes.
All right, so I have now labeled this. You will notice, by the way, that the origin is zero. It's not one, it's not 100, the origin is zero. That's very important. So now that I have set up my axes and I've determined my scale, my next step is to plot my points. So here I have some data. Um, I took this data from a student last year. So these, these are real numbers um, based off of somebody's actual work. And what we're going to do is we're gonna plot each of these points. Now, obviously you are gonna plot your own data. Um, so the first thing to note, there's no line at 20 grams. But I do have a line at 25 grams. This is 25 grams. So 20 grams is about four fifths of the way to 25. So that would be around here is where 20 grams is. So it's not quite all the way up to the 25 gram mark. Um, my time for that is 4.83. Now to be clear, I don't have 4.83 on this axis, but I've got four and I've got four and a half. And then 4.75 would be halfway between four and five. So it should be just past halfway along here. That's about 4.8. So I'm gonna to try to make a dot that's sort of at the place where I am about 20 grams on my x-axis and about 4.8 on my y-axis. Is this perfectly plotted? No, but it's done as precisely as I can make it. So that's how I'm gonna do this. So you're gonna go through and you're gonna plot each of your points. So my next point here is at 50 grams and at 5.09, so that's basically just slightly above five. So here is 50 grams and just slightly above five. I'm gonna plot that point. I've got one at 90. So again, 90 isn't on here, but 100 is. And this one's 75. And you know, halfway between 90 or 75 and 100 would be about 187. So it's a little bit past halfway and I'm going to 7.3, so 7.5 would be here, seven is here, so 7.3 is somewhere between them. You're just gonna plot each point as best you can. So go ahead, take a moment and plot all of your data points. Um, and we're gonna take a few moments for y'all to do that, and we will continue this once you've finished gathering your data. Okay, so here I have finished plotting my data. And what you'll notice is that while it isn't a perfect line, it is roughly forming something that's like a line. Um, you can see that there basically is a path that goes up this way through the data. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna use your ruler, your straight edge, and you're gonna try to sort of trace a path through this line. And what I recommend is try to make it so that about half the points are above it, about half the points are below it. Um, you really wanna sort of be tracing that path as best you can. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but just like imagine that you got some of these points very slightly too slow. Some of them are probably very slightly too high. What's the path really look like for this? Um, if this were a single line, what do you think it would look like? Um, and you're gonna draw that. You'll notice it's not gonna go through the origin. So that means that this technically is not actually a proportional relationship. You're gonna draw that line on here. So here you can see I've got this line. Um, that's not totally perfect. I probably should have tilted it a little bit higher up, but you know, that's what I did. And you know, maybe if I were to do it again, I'd do it more like this. 
but you're gonna do the best you can. So now we have this line. And this line represents what I think the relationship is between mass and time. So I've got the mass here, I've got the time here. So I've got my mass and my time. Now, the thing that makes this super useful is the fact that you have a time for your unknown. So this set of data, uh, and again, everyone's data is gonna be different. Use your own, don't use mine. Um, this kid said that their time was 8.83. So here is like 8.5. 8.75 would be here, so 8.83 would be around here. Is that perfect? No, but it's roughly correct. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a dotted line going horizontally across this at the time that I measured. So this is the time I measured for the unknown, and I'm just gonna draw a dotted line because this unknown mass has to be a point somewhere in this space, and we know the time it has, but right now could be any mass. So we don't know what the mass is yet, but we know that its time is right about here. But if what we're saying is, well, we think that this point is on this line, and if we think this point is on this line, then really it should exist where the line meets this dotted line, and that is right about here. So this spot right here is what I think my unknown might be. And the cool thing about that spot is it has an x-coordinate, right? It has a mass. And so I can trace down from here all the way down, making this nice dotted line as I go. And I can make this trace down. And then this spot right here, that is my mass. So for me, you know, I had 275 here, 300 here, I would wanna estimate, you know, how far along do I think this is? What mass do I think that value is? And then I'm gonna label this point with the X value comma the Y value. So I'm actually gonna draw and label this point. So I think, you know, it's more than halfway between 275 and 300. So that means it's gotta be at least 287. So I think that's around 290. And your mass might be really different from mine. Again, I'm using a student's data. This is not necessarily accurate data. Um, and I already told you, I think I drew that line a little bit off. So I'm gonna label this point at 290 grams and 8.83 seconds. That was my data. You're gonna do this with your own individual data. So I've labeled, labeled my point. So now I have a graph. The graph has the following features. It has a horizontal x-axis, which is labeled, right? It says mass in grams. It has a vertical axis, which is labeled time in seconds. It has all of the dots that represent the data I gathered, measured. I drew a line that represents my relationship, roughly speaking. Again, it's okay if it's a little bit imperfect. Do the best that you can. Uh, I've got a dotted line that represents the time I measured. And from the intersection, of those two lines right here, I trace down to my x-axis and that is my mass. Now the last thing that this needs is a title. So we always wanna make sure we, get, we give our, dat, our graphs a descriptive title. So I'm gonna call this the um, time taken to oscillate 20 times in an inertial balance. And I'm going to take a picture of this graph, one where I can see my x-axis label and my y-axis label and my title all in one frame. I'm gonna take a picture of that and that will get put into my lab report as my graph.